All right, guys, we're going to talk about Section 5.4, medians and altitudes. So first, let's talk about what a median is. It's simply a line segment that connects the vertex of a triangle, so any vertex, to the midpoint of the opposite side. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here in this diagram, if we were to highlight a median E, a would be a median. Notice it connects the vertex A to the midpoint E on the opposite side. So if there are three medians in any triangle, that point where they all meet is called that centroid. So this point right here, P, that's the centroid. And the centroid theorem says that AP, so if I took this, uh, this, this part right here, A to P, that would be two-thirds of the whole length AE. So if I went all the way from A to E, whatever that length is, AP, the green part, is two-thirds of it. And that goes for all the other medians as well. So in order to talk about two-thirds, I know that's not really a fraction we're used to. Let's, let's take a look at what happens if we split up a segment into thirds. So if I take a whole length, so if I go all the way from from the edge of this black line all the way to the edge of the blue line. That's cut into thirds. And let's say each of those is worth five. So if I take two thirds, that means I'm taking two of those pieces. So that would be like five and five, so that would be 10. Okay, one third is simply the five. So let's see how that breaks down. The whole segment is all three of the fives, that's 15. Two thirds is two of the fives, which is 10 and one-third is just one of the five, which is five. So keep that in mind as you're going through these diagrams that might help you to think about one-third and two-thirds and, and the whole length. So let's look at an example. We have that G is the centroid of this diagram. So that means that all of these segments inside of the triangle are medians. So that's congruent, this is congruent. We're, create, we're marking this so that we know that E, F, and D are midpoints. So because of that, right away I know that AD and DB are congruent, so DB has to be 8, so I'm going to mark that in my diagram. Okay, now they also say AG is 10, and AG is part of that median. Now notice it's on the two-thirds part. So again, if we think about this is made up of two of those thirds. So if I split 10 in half, that would, that would help me know what one single third is. So this is two thirds, so that would be like five and five, like in our example up above. So that must mean this little third piece remaining is five. So this is a third, this is two thirds. And that's because of that centroid theorem. Now the other thing they tell us is that CD, that's from here to here, CD, that whole thing is 18. So we need to cut up 18 into thirds. So if we do 18 divided by 3, that's going to give me 6. So one single third, that, that would be this part over here, D to G, that's just going to be 6. So I'm going to label that 6. And then this part over on this part of this side of the centroid, that's going to be 2 thirds. So 6 and 6 would give me a whole length of 12. So the whole thing is 18, 1 third is 6, 2 thirds is 12. So now what we can do is go over here and see what they're asking us. So BD, well, we already took care of that. We know that's 8. AB is that whole length, so we just have to do 8 plus 8, and that gives us 16. And EG, we said that that's going to end up being 5. AE is this whole length from here to here, so that whole length is 5 plus 10, so that would be 15. CG C to G, we marked that as 12 in our diagram, so that's going to be 12. And DG is just one, that one-third of it. We said that was 6. So please go back and rewind that. Look at that again if you need to. I know sometimes it's difficult to deal with thirds. Moving on, we're going to do another diagram. And we've got two different things going on. So in this first part, they're talking about AB is equal to BC. Now that doesn't have anything to do with medians. So I'm going to highlight AB and BC are what they're saying is congruent. So really they're telling us it's an isosceles triangle. The other thing is that they have this 
right angle right here. And we also have BD right in the middle of that, going from the vertex down. So if we think about way back in congruent triangles, they, I've essentially cut this first isosceles triangle into two different triangles. So I have um, a right, right angle here and a right angle here. So I can use HL. Remember HL? The, the yellow lines are the hypotenuse and the green line is the leg. So I know these two smaller triangles are congruent to each other. Now why do I care about that? Well, if I know triangles are congruent to each other, then I know the pieces are congruent. So when they say find AD, <clears throat> I know that AD is going to be the same distance as DC. All right, so DC, they already said, was a length of 12. So then I know that AD has to be... AD has to be 12. <clears throat> now the other piece... I have to find the measure of ABC. So ABC, that's this whole angle. Now they said that this little bitty angle right here is 39. And we know that these two triangles are congruent. So by CPCTC, all the little parts are congruent. So that angle is also going to be 39. So I'm going to take my ABC is going to be 39 plus 39. So that's just going to be 78. So that whole red angle is 78 degrees. All right, so that had nothing to do with medians, but it did involve our isosceles triangles and what we knew about HL. I'm going to erase all of this because on the next part, I'm going to draw different things. So I don't want that to get in the way of what we're doing. Now let's erase that a little bit faster. There we go. All right, so in 14, we're given that G is the centroid. So that means that these are medians. All right, so let's, let's label what we know. We know that all of these are midpoints. And we know that the medians are cut into one-third and two-third pieces. So this 13 right here, we have to eventually find FG. So this 13 is referring to AG right here. Let me highlight that for you. AG is 13. So 13 is the two-thirds part. So it's taking up two of the thirds. If I just want to know what one-third is, then I needed to cut that in half. All right, so if I do 13 divided by 2, and you'll get a decimal, and that's okay, that's going to give us 6.5. So this FG part is going to be 6.5. Now BD, BD would be this whole median length. All right, and they say that 10 is the two-thirds part. So again, we have to take the two-thirds part and then cut it in half because I want to know what each third piece is. So if I, I take 10 and cut it in half, that's going to give me 5, just like in our original segment that we cut into thirds. So this part's 5, this part's 10. So that whole length, BD, is going to be 10 plus 15, or 10 plus 5, which is 15. This last one, this uh, number 8, we're going to save that for our warm-up tomorrow, or in the next class, not tomorrow, but next class. So... Um, Hold on to that, um, we'll come back to that. Looking on at the next example, we have point G is our centroid, and we're going to try to find X. So now here they didn't tell us what the lengths are, they just gave us these expressions. So let's see what's going on with CG and CE. So CG is from here to here, so that's part of a median. That's the two-thirds part of a median. And then CE is the whole length of the median. So CE goes all the way from there to there. All right, so we know that the green part is two thirds of the length of the yellow part. So we're gonna write that down. That's just what the centroid theorem says. So I'm gonna write down CG is equal to two thirds of CE. Remember, two thirds of the we're doing two thirds of the bigger piece. So CE is the bigger piece, and I'm doing two thirds of that. 
So you have to set up that equation. And now we're going to fill in what CG and CE are. So CG is 3x plus 7, so I'm going to fill that in. And CE is 6x. All right, so now we're ready to solve. So I'm going to do 2 thirds times the 6x. So just type that into your calculator if you need to. Um, or you can do it mentally. But you should get 2 thirds times 6 is 4. So we're going to have 4x on the right-hand side. Now we're ready to solve the equation, so I'm going to subtract 3x, and that's going to give me x is equal to 7. So I got x equals 7, and that's all they wanted me to find, right? They just wanted me to find the value of x. All right, so I'm going to erase this again. So we can do the next one, 20. So in 20, they say bg. They're talking about bg. Let's highlight that. BG is the two-thirds part of the median, and then DG is the one-third part. Okay, so what's the relationship between one-third and two-thirds? Well, it takes two green ones to make up the whole yellow one. All right, so if we think about it, I'm going to set up 2 times dg, so it's going to take 2 dgs to equal uh, bg, because this is 1 third and this is 2 thirds. Okay. So if we continue on, we're going to re replace bg with 5x minus 1, and I'm going to replace dg with 4x minus 5. So I'm going to distribute that 2, and then I'm going to get 8x minus 10. And I'm going to subtract the 5x, so that's going to give me 3x minus 10 on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to add the 10, and that gives, gives me 9. One more step, we're going to divide by 3, and that gives me x equals 3. So we've got x for both of those. And now we're going to talk about another kind of segment, and that's an altitude. Altitude is is just the segment in a triangle. It's perpendicular segment. So you see this, this is an altitude and it goes from the vertex to the opposite side. Notice that it doesn't necessarily have to be in the midpoint. Okay, Over here it doesn't even have to be inside the triangle. It just has to go from the vertex straight down to the opposite side. All right, Altitude is another name, uh, is another name for height of a triangle. Okay, So that's what we're going to talk about area of triangles because we know the formula is one half times base times height. And h is always going to be an altitude. So let me just show you a few examples of where that altitude could be located. So in a right triangle, the height or the altitude could be located, it could be one of the legs of the triangle. In a normal acute triangle, which is what we're used to, it could go in the middle, the inside of the triangle. Or in an obtuse triangle, it could even be outside like this one is. So the altitude and, or the height is outside of the triangle. So be careful of that when you're doing area of triangles. All right, so let's do a few examples just to refresh your memory of the area formula. So in this diagram, this first one, we need to identify what our base and height are. So I'm, I have the base is 3 and the height is 5. So I'm just going to plug those into the formula. So I've got 1 half, base is 3, height is 5, so 1 half, 3 times 5. And then you solve that and you get the area of this triangle is 7.5. So notice that I didn't use the 6 or the 7 at all. right? I just used the base and the height. Over in this one we have the base is the full 21 and the height is 8. So we're going to label those. Base is 21, height is 8. Now we know exactly where to put that in the formula. So we plug that in and then solve that, and we get the area is 84. Now over here, we're given the height. The height is 5, but we don't know the base. However, this is a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So keep in mind, we're trying to figure out what this base is right here. Okay, we know the height. So we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, this is going to be my a. The base that we don't know is going to be the b, and 13 is my c. So I'm plugging those in. I'm going to square them. So I have 25 plus b squared equals 169. 
I'm going to solve that. So b squared equals 144. And then we know the square root of 44 is simply 12. So this side right here is 12. So then the area, we're simply going to plug in 12 and 5 and for the base and the height. That gives us a total answer of 30. Now again, these problems down here, I'm going to wait for our warm-up. So we'll do that next class.